It's a bronze. Yes. Very heavy. Um, it's and it's a one sculpture of a series, which are all different, which I bring. Really different in the uh, in the posture. Yeah. So all lined like, down. No. Some of them are looking out the gallery window. Mm -hmm. Some of them are hiding behind pedestals. Some of them are sitting on pedestals. Some of them are trying to press the button for the elevator, but always in the gallery setting. So, it is an imagination around the gas ballerina. Whenever and it was fallen down, was descended from a pedestal mm -hmm. in the gallery. Well, a pedestal is a trapping, isn't it? A trapping. It's, it's always been the thing well, that... Well, that's why she's put on, she's there and there's, she stands there and they have said, now be quiet. Every time I go to a museum, I look for the Degas bronze ballerina and I always feel really sad that she is always looked at and she's always trapped by this pedestal. Mm -hmm. So okay. I decided to make a sequence of sculptures where she descends from a pedestal and she explores the institution. It becomes like a playground. This is number nine, I think. Of, um, of how many? The same amount as there were original Degas bronzes. Okay. Which is 43, I think. I have 43 frames in a sequence, narrative sequence. Um, and I filled about 20 of them. I know the last two, but I can't give the story away. <laughs> And how have you developed the postures? Did you have a model? Um, photograph the model? face is based on Degas, Degas ballerina. Yes. And the, the hair body is different. slightly longer. And she's she's not wearing any rags. No, she has a bus, she has a bathing suit. Yeah. And the body is my wife. And did you ask oh great body. Yeah, pretty but, good. But, but did, did you ask her to pose? Yeah. And photograph her? I, she poses in the way that I want, then I photograph her, and then I have a sculpt to make it. Okay. And then it gets sent to the foundry from the wax. And there's always a blue cube and a plinth with her, because... There's always the blue? The blue cube. Yeah, there's always there. And there's always the white plinth. But the size of the ballerina is always this two-thirds scale of her adult. Mm -hmm. And the plinth and the blue cube always change scale. And the, the idea is that each one is a relationship between these three things. So the plinth is her plinth, from which she's descended. Mm -hmm. And the blue cube, in my mind, is like a work of art. You know if you imagine Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse walks into a gallery in a cartoon, a contemporary art gallery, the, the object of art in the cartoon would most likely be a blue cube. It's like, for me, it's like a stereotype of... The blue cube. Just blue? It's a perfect... Cube is, is, is it the generic form? It, I think so. Abstraction? I think so. And blue is the generic... Dark blue is the generic color of... Yeah, each planet. Yeah, there's a lot of... And, and, and it's an azure in, in the sky. Ah, uh, yeah. It's the end of the color. Yeah, yeah. Color, and and limited infinite. color. Infinite color. That's interesting limited. because... Because brown is, is heavy. Yeah. And of course it's earth color. Red is fiery. Yeah. Or violent. And blue is, is Possibly precise. Is. And also awakers in a yeah. straight sense. So, right? Yeah. But possibilities. Yeah. Because also in um, the television industry, the color blue is used as a neutral color for blue yeah. screen. Yeah. And that's a endless. And actually, if you turn on your video and you don't get a signal, you get a blue screen as well. Nice. So actually, everything that's neutral or endless or full of possibilities is blue. Mm -hmm. It's called in the old book. book it's called We Are Made Mac and Night. Ah yes. Yeah. We Are Made and New Year. Yeah. And then they have a blue filter. Mm -hmm. Get this kind of very deep. Mm -hmm. They make darkness in movies by yeah, they having a filter of blue. So they film it in daylight and they put a, a, a blue filter, 
which is called the Hungarian American, that's a French contraption, and they can uh, make it into a night scene. A night scene. That's why there's always strong shadows in American Western films at no, night. No, no. <laughs> I think she's a bit bored in this one. Mm -hmm. The first one I did, she was smoking. It's as if she just got off a pedestal and she just sits there smoking a cigarette. So the, after work, yeah, or like just to relax <coughs> from being stood up for 120 years. Um, so the order that I'm making them in, you could put them side by side, and it would make a, a narrative sequence of. So you could have them all together in one gallery, or something. You could you have to ship them from all over <coughs> the world, so it costs too much. But the older she gets, and the more um, renderings of her exist, the more vicious she becomes. <coughs> or the more you, the you, have you, act, you make them twenty for twenty five years, your wife gets older. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the, the older she gets, the, the more lack of respect she gets for the institution of art. Okay. I mean, here she's flicking the artwork across the floor. Oh, yeah, that's what she does. She's like flicking, flicking, uh, She's flicking the sculpture. Piece of dust from your... It, is, it was a secret, but the second to last one that I'm going to do is her levitating in space without any strings. Mm. Magically levitating in space. And we have to find out how you do that. Yeah, and I'm going to do this all the way around it, like, like a magician, to show that there's no strings. Mm -hmm. In these artworks of yours, there are this complete surprise within the context of very logical, very logical, very logical mm -hmm. situations. It is almost logical that she would come down from a pedestal. It makes sense to me. It makes sense. But then, how does she do it? I mean, if you... You see, it's not surprising for me, because I made them. Of course. So it's really hard for me to position myself as the spectator and understand that. Yes, because, but when you made them, yeah. there was a surprise. I mean, when you yeah. figured it out, you must have said, oh my god, this is something I can use or this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And from the moment you do it, it's no longer experimental, it's, it's real. Mm -hmm. But then for the viewer, like me, it becomes that surprising. And what, what we tend to do always is to try is to figure it out why, why this would be, which is a problem. You know, the interesting thing is, like most of your work, it's, the, all the stories are circular. Confined, like Beckett. Do you know something Beckettian about? Mm -hmm. uh, like someone like Beckett, how he a, has a figure and then his, well, his small place, which all place, which is have play without words. So there's this one figure who goes on the walls and on the floor. And that's, uh, there's something in it also from Bruce Nauman, maybe, if I can. Trying to go back to the original real, realism of art. It's, it's real, it's not abstract, it's real, it is convincing. But the history of art is circular, it's just, it's yeah, just it's a, very as time goes on, the circle gets larger. Mm -hmm.